Welcome everybody. Good evening. I'm Jessica Stokes. I'm one of the interim co-directors of Partners in Health and Wholeness. And I'm so grateful that you are uh, spending your evening with us. So thank you again for coming. Tonight, purpose is to talk about Partners in Health and Wholeness. It's PHW 101. We're going to talk about some of our, our resources, our, an overview of our program, and ways that we can collaborate with you and your faith community. So we're so thrilled that you are here. Just a couple of housekeeping items. If you have a question, there will be a time later in the presentation for questions. So feel free at any point in the presentation to put your question in the chat. Or later on, you may, during the Q&A time, you may raise your hand on Zoom. There's a, a feature to do that under the reactions on the bottom tab. And once you raise your hand, we will then unmute you so that you can ask your question. So feel free over chat or that or um, ask through phone or video. So thanks again for joining us. We're so grateful for you all. And PHW uh, is immensely happy to share time with our churches and our faith leaders and our lay leaders. We're so grateful for all the work you're doing in the world. At this time, I'm going to pass it to uh, Arlisha. Good evening. I am the Reverend Dr. Alicia Simmons. I'm excited to be here. And tonight um, we have just a small centering activity. So tonight as we begin to discuss the work of PHW, you will likely leave inspired to begin programming or to expand some of your existing program in the year ahead. You'll possibly leave with a list of people you want to contact and dates to talk about with your pastor or members. But for the next few minutes, I'd like for us to center our minds and our hearts by asking or considering this simple question. The question is this, where is your Bethany? Where is your Bethany? Whether from your time of study or a sermon, some of you may have heard of a place called Bethany. I acknowledge today that not all participants may be formed out of the Judeo-Christian context. However, today's centering thought explores universal concepts of rest and self-care. So where is your Bethany? Bethany was the small village of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. You can find it in John chapter 11. It was located to the south of the Mount of Olives, about two miles from Jerusalem. Bethany was a place that Jesus visited often during his earthly ministry, and it was one of the final stops on his way to Jerusalem. It was in Bethany that resurrected that he resurrected Lazarus from the grave. But before the resurrection, it was a place where he would fellowship with Mary and Martha and Lazarus, who were considered his friends. As Jesus carries out this grand assignment of prophet, priest, healer, and deliverer, he stops in Bethany for times of respite. And yes, there is not every account appearing in scripture, but it is clear that Bethany and the people in that place held a special, held a special place for Jesus. And while miracles took place in Bethany, it was the place where many contend Jesus just chilled out, let his hair down, and reconnected with both his friends and God. So tonight, I won't have time to exegete this scripture in its entirety or break down the relationships of Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and Jesus. But I suggest to you that even in the busyness of ministry, and going about God's business, we must find space and place where we can too sit down for a spell. Uh, my ancestors would sing a work song that was a coded song that I believe even has contemporary meaning. Sometimes I find myself humming it and it simply says, I'm going to lay down my burdens down by the riverside, wherever your Bethany is. I encourage you to lay down some things. I encourage you to seek fellowship where there is laughter that scripture tells us is like medicine. 
Let your Bethany be a place where you tap into your own humanity without titles and to-do lists and emails and directives and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. As you identify your Bethany, it may not be, a, it may be a place where there is no obligation. It is just a place of rest. It is a place of fellowship. It is a place filled with those who represent joy, peace, and love. So with Thanksgiving being 37 days away and Advent being 40 days away and Christmas being 60 days away, as we anticipate and wait and plan and preach and rehearse for our cantatas and serve and decorate and lament about the decorations that won't put themselves up, may we find that space where we can rest for the work ahead. Amen and ashe. And at this time, I would like to introduce you to the staff members of Partners in Health and Wholeness. You have already met or seen the Reverend Jessica Stokes, who is our interim director. You will meet tonight, Nicole Johnson, who will wave, who is our other interim co-director. Krista Westervelt is our healthy aging consultant. And then there is Elizabeth Brewington. You will also meet her later tonight. She does over, overdose response and our HIV education. And Stephanie Saunders, Sanders, excuse me. She works with our collaborative pledges and our mini grants. And if you are in our collaborative, you'll be receiving emails from her and will find yourself communicating with her on the journey. And as stated, I am Arlisha Simmons. I'm your East Regional Associate Director. Thank you so much for being with us. We will continue on our journey. Thank you for starting us off, Arlisha. That was beautiful and a wonderful centering. Good evening, everyone. Like Arlisha said, my name is Elizabeth Brewington. I'm so happy to be with y'all tonight. And I am here to introduce the PHW program. So Partners in Health and Wholeness was founded about 11 years ago to just bridge issues of health, faith, and justice. We know each year North Carolinians die due to preventable diseases, and we believe that health is defined by many factors, such as physical, mental, social, spiritual, and community. And we believe that faith communities are an institution of great influence in our communities and can be great resources when it comes to talking about health. So Partners in Health and Wholeness, we provide resources, connection, and so support for faith communities around health projects and programs. We aim to establish trust and partnerships with faith communities. We are free to all faith communities, um, but we also offer individual mini grants up to $1,000 or community mini grants up to $5,000. We're a statewide organization, and we are so honored to work with so many different faith communities across the state. We also recognize the inequalities in the healthcare system oh, affecting BIPOC communities and people disproportionately impacted by economic inequalities. And I'm going to hand it over to Nicole. Thank you, Elizabeth. So I see some familiar faces, y'all. Um, so hopefully this will not be a repeat. Hi, Eric. <laughs> and I see quite a few people I know on here. So um, as some of you know, and some of you may not know, so the overall Partners in Health and Wholeness program, we have very specific focus areas. And over the years, we've added some more. And currently, as you can see on your screen, our focus areas, we still have healthy eating, physical activity, mental health advocacy and education, tobacco, nicotine, and vaping education, um, special projects like piloting um, new health and faith initiatives, uh, denominational support, which means we try to align with the initiatives that your denomination may be um, planning and shaping, and we try to align with those and provide help where we can. Um, we also have over opioid and overdose crisis focus area, as well as a substance use uh, focus area. 
And then we also have added HIV advocacy and education. Um, and as you probably have seen, we've had some special grants around some of these focus areas. Um, we've done webinars, our sacred conversation series that we started during COVID, our faith and health connection series that we also started. So these focus areas, um, we provide resources in a lot of different ways, some virtual, some in-person, um, some where it's individual support for your faith and health ministry, depending on what your focus area is. Next slide. So our PHW, particularly PHW led events, there are some of those. So I want to um, definitely highlight right now, we don't expect your faith and health ministry to be solely shaped by um, our events. These are meant to provide like additional support. They're meant to provide inspiration. Uh, they're meant to provide um, focus areas maybe that, that you may not be ready to delve into with your particular faith and health ministry in your community, but you do want to continue to kind of learn more and think about ideas that you could implement. And so our PHW led events are our webinars and we're gonna be doing some of these webinars are going to have kind of a probably a dual component as we continue to move forward in this kind of transition with COVID. Um, our sacred conversations, faith and health connection. And as some of you know, we just had our faith and health summit on September 15th, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, that happens every two years. And we are going to restart our regional gatherings. And those regional gatherings are going to happen in very specific geographical areas in the East and in the West and in Central North Carolina. And most of those regional gatherings are going to have um, a part, maybe a particular focus. Uh, we're thinking about doing an Eastern regional gathering about around mental health, for example. Um, other PHW led events, um, those include our virtual support, all of the webinars that we do and some of the um, toolkits that we develop, you can find on our website or the recordings are on our YouTube channel. We have printed materials that we've been working to develop over this past year and will continue to do in 2023. So you can look out for some of those printed materials. We'll ask if you'd prefer to receive them um, via email or if you want them sent to you like in a hard copy. Um, we have been working on our resource map and we are hoping to have a resource map that is not only searchable um, for our health leads and faith leaders, but searchable by particular topic. And for every focus area that we have, we want to put two local, local to you resources for every county. Um, so every focus area, healthy eating, physical activity, mental health advocacy, um, freedom from nicotine, uh, tobacco cessation and education. Uh, that resource map, we're gonna continue to add to it. Currently, we have, we have a shout out to our own Krista Westervelt, our healthy aging coordinator. And um, there, is, there are two resources for every county on that searchable map on our website right now for healthy aging. So that's something we're gonna continue to work on. We're gonna to continue to develop toolkits. We have some that are available now, Becoming a Trauma-Informed Faith Community. Um, uh, there is a Sunday school guide on the overdose crisis that you can use for a small group, as well as a toolkit that goes along with that. And we're going to be having a resource library that's gonna be coming soon where we stock in our offices, uh, specific resources, videos, and books that you'll be able to um, either borrow or get your own copy for your faith community to, if you wanna develop a, um, a resource library for your faith and health ministry. So those are some of our particular kind of PHW led events um, that we provide as support for your faith and health ministry. Next slide, all right. Um, so what does that actually look like? There's all the support and all these things. Um, what does that mean? Uh, for those of you who've been with us before, you know that we have what we call a collaborative pledge. And I'm going to hand it over to our new program engagement administrator, Stephanie Saunders. And she's gonna tell you more about the collaborative pledge, about the process. Um, our webinars and our um, online materials tend to be 
readily available to any faith community who needs support for their faith and health ministry. But there are particular things that are not available to everyone, like when it comes to um, our mini grants and our community grants. And our collaborative pledge is one of those ways to be able to access those um, specific resources. So Stephanie. Thank you, Nicole. Um, it's great to be here with everybody uh, for the first time tonight. I've been with the team since late August, and it's an honor to be able to share this information with you. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, I just want to give you a, a broad overview of what the collaborative pledge is. I'm sure many of you might already know this, but let's assume that some folks don't. Uh, the word collaborative is a way for us to emphasize that the work is best done when we do it together. We share a common goal, congregations creating healthier environments by focusing on tobacco prevention and cessation, healthy eating, increased physical activity, and mental wellness. And we'll add to that um, three more areas um, that we mentioned earlier, the healthy aging, um, overdose crisis, and HIV. Um, next slide, please. Uh, to get a little more into detail about the um, practical workings of the Collaborative Pledge, um, it is the first step in applying for a grant with PHW. You have to have an active Collaborative Pledge with us in order to be eligible. It is a commitment to continuing a journey of putting your faith into health action. As Nicole stated, um, it's also a way for us to connect you with resources throughout the state, as well as other faith communities who are part of the collaborative who might be near you or share similar focus areas with you. And it's also a way for us to enter into relationship with you and to learn more about your health ministry and the goals and challenges that you're facing and to better serve you. Next, please. So any faith community that worships regularly together is eligible to be a PHW collaborative partner. And that includes all faith traditions as well. So as long as there is a regular worship meeting together, we welcome you to be a part of the collaborative. We have five main points for the collaborative pledge. Um, and that is maintaining tobacco-free buildings on worship grounds, serving healthy food and drinks at events, Asking your clergy person or faith leader to commit complete the clergy commitment. We'll talk more about that later. Um, and that clergy leader would also commit to sharing the message of faith as a health issue with your congregation. And then finally, integrating at least one congregation-based activity based on one or more of the seven focus areas of PHW. And next we have just a visual representation of the seven focus areas that we've mentioned before, mental health, overdose substance abuse, healthy aging, HIV, physical activity, healthy eating, and tobacco cessation. So to apply for the collaborative pledge, um, first we'll let you know that its applications are accepted on a rolling basis, January 15th through November 30th, and that's standard every year. Um, you'll want to designate a health lead for your faith community, and that can be a lay person or a clergy person. The health lead will then need to fill out the collaborative pledge on our website. And there's a graphic here below. Our, our website is healthandwholeness.org. And this graphic here shows you exactly where to find the collaborative form. And an important step of that is to make sure that your clergy or faith leader, and it could be that the health lead and the faith leader are the same person, but if that's not the case, make sure that your faith leader has completed the clergy commitment form. And it's important to know that this is separate from your collaborative pledge. We'll need both before we can approve. Yes, and as Jessica said in the, um, in the chat, you're gonna receive all of these details in a follow-up. So don't feel like you have to remember all this now. So some quick things just to be aware of as you're applying for your collaborative pledge. Um, you're eligible to submit a collaborative pledge every 12 months. And you have to complete the form in one sitting. Unfortunately, you can't save your work and come back to it. Um, we encourage you to include as much detail as possible in your responses. This helps us to get to know you better and to shape our program. 
one thing we really want you to be aware of is that we don't expect you to be actively engaging in all seven of our focus areas. In fact, if, if you're saying that you are, you're kind of diluting what we we're able to learn about you. So we don't expect you to be actively engaging in every focus areas. We want to know what is most important to you. Uh, once you have completed your collaborative pledge, you'll receive an automated confirmation email. And then we will review it and you'll receive a formal approval within three weeks of your application. And that's gonna let you know what comes next. And what comes next is our grants. So we have, <laughs> we have three grant opportunities and I'm gonna talk to you about uh, two of them today, the mini grant and the community grant opportunity. So um, go ahead. The individual mini grant, um, by joining the collaborative, faith communities can apply for a yearly grant of up to $1,000. The funding can then be used to help create and grow programs and initiatives within their health ministry. Next, please. You are eligible for a mini grant if you are an active collaborative partner, meaning that you have a collaborative pledge on file within the last 12 months, and you cannot have received a mini grant from us within the, the last 12 months. So basically it's a 12 month cycle um, from your last collaboration and grant with us. Here are some finer points that you need to know about the mini grant. Um, we really want you to focus in on a specific project um, for the funds to go towards. For example, a community garden, health fair, a speaker series on mental health or overdose crisis. Um, we just want to know where the funds are going to be used and how you're going to use them. In fact, we'll ask for a budget breakdown in your, in your mini grant um, application. Uh, the project must be directly related to one or more of our seven focus areas. Your application is more likely to be approved if you give us lots of detail. Um, we're looking for timelines, we're looking for budget, and we're looking for measurable outcomes, like what do you want to see happen within your faith community as a result of receiving this grant. Right now, we are still unfortunately contending with COVID, um, so we require that you have a COVID contingency plan if you are hoping to have an in-person event. It's also good to know that there are some funding restrictions. There are a few things we don't fund like rent and payroll and ink cartridges, things like that. Um, I won't go into all of it here, but you can find all those details on our website. So to apply for a mini grant, um, we are accepting mini grant applications through November 30th of this year. There'll be another grant cycle, a few more grant cycles that open up in 2023. So we'll announce those soon. Once you receive your collaborative pledge formal approval, a link to your mini grant application will be contained in that email. If for some reason you lose that email or can't find the link, whatever, um, send, shoot me an email at phwinfo and I'll, I'll resend the link for you. Again, a few little tips about the mini grant. You can't um, save your work. You have to be, a, be prepared to finish it in one sitting. You'll get an automated confirmation. We will notify you within three weeks if your grant is approved or denied. Make sure that you give us your um, current mailing address because that is where we will send the check. And in the rare case that we have to deny your grant, we want you to know that we welcome and encourage you to reapply. Um, if there's any, for whatever reason that we weren't able to apply, we wanna work with you to kind of refine that and help you get where you're going. Uh, the next grant that I wanna to talk to you about is the community grant. We created the PHW community grant to support and inspire faith communities to work together to improve the health and wholeness of shared community. We have witnessed the richness of crossing denominational or geographical boundaries to build a coalition. So the community mini grant is available to a cohort of three or more faith communities who are working together on one project and you're eligible for up to $5,000. All of the faith communities involved 
must be active collaborative partners, meaning they've submitted a collaborative pledge within the last 12 months. And the same rules apply with the, the grant. Um, none of the communities involved can have received a mini grant within the last 12 months. That would make them ineligible, excuse me. So the application process for the community grant is a little bit different. And what we like to do is once we get all three or more of your collaborative pledges in, we wanna begin a conversation with you about how to proceed with your grant application. So this one's a little bit more in depth. So it'll be a lot of extra communication with your community grant, but it'll be worth the time. So that's um, all I'm gonna be speaking with you about tonight. If you have any questions about individual or community grants, please contact me. I'd be happy to have an individual Zoom call with you to help you work through your grant, any questions that you have. So thank you for listening. And I'm gonna pass it back to Jessica, who's gonna share with you about the BIPOC mental health grants. Thank you, Stephanie, for that wonderful overview. Uh, so we're so grateful for you on the team leading those efforts. And as a team, we support all of your projects and ideas that your faith community has. So please reach out to Stephanie and, uh, and um, thank you again for your work with us. I have an exciting opportunity to share with you in that we have a special BIPOC mental health grant uh, that we are offering until May, 2023 or uh, as long as we have funds. And so this is a special grant for faith communities predominantly of color to work on mental health. The thing that I wanna make clear is that you can potentially get one of the other mini grants. So either the individual mini grant or the community mini grant, as well as the BIPOC mental health grant. So getting one of the other original uh, PHW grants does not mean that you cannot apply for the mental health grant. So please know that uh, this grant amount is for between five to ten thousand dollars for the first phase. And then later in the year, we will have more information about applying for one of the larger grants, which is up to fifty thousand to establish a mental health resource hub in your region. So more information will come to you at the end of the year. But in the meantime, this grant is open. Please uh, submit an application. You can find the application on our website to apply for a project up to five, between five to $10,000. And it's been really cool to see what faith communities have come up with from helping establish a voucher program to help offset the cost of therapy, to establishing training, suicide prevention trainings and mental health first aid trainings for their deacons and staff and anybody in the faith community who wants to be trained, to also hosting speakers and experts to come to a mental health series. And so there, there's so many ideas uh, and ways to utilize this grant. So we invite you. And I will say that this grant is competitive. So please have a well thought out idea and detailed budget uh, ready to go before you apply. And we have a five person committee who is, they are not on staff with PHW who are judging and evaluating these grants. And so they um, are looking for as much detail as possible. So feel free to reach out to me. My email is at the bottom of the slide. I'm happy to help uh, provide any consultation or answer any questions about this particular grant. Uh, I, would love, I would love to talk with you about it. So please reach out to me and email me. We can set up a time and, uh, and good luck. So next slide, please. I just wanna make sure it's come up a couple of times already, but all of our resources are available on uh, our website and also YouTube. So if there's a particular topic or resource you're looking for, we invite you to check it out. I know Nicole mentioned a lot of these resources. And then um, 
including as well as you can see here, here's a screenshot of our YouTube, just some of our topics. We've had everything already as mentioned from HIV advocacy and education, to the overdose response programs, the suicide prevention training options, and the resource map that was mentioned. So again, just check out our website, our YouTube. And if you can't find something that you're looking for in particular, just email us and we will, we will connect you. <clears throat> Go ahead. I do want to add really quick. So um, there are a couple of folks on here. I have been to your faith community. We love to visit if you have particular events coming up, um, particular projects. Uh, we do love to be invited um, if you let us know about those events. And you can also share those on our PHW calendar with us. We can share them on our social media. Um, and I will also add, after the collaborative pledge is approved, you do receive in the mail um, a certificate. And in the past, um, especially before COVID, um, if your faith community was interested in having that certificate presented during a worship service, um, we are absolutely willing to do that. And we are getting back out on the road again. So if there are any of you um, who would like to have like your certificate presented, or if you're awarded a grant and you'd like to have it presented during a worship service um, as a way of uplifting your faith and health ministry, um, please know that we are totally ready to do that. Just let us know when and where we need to be. All right, so any questions or answers, if you have questions, feel free to add them to the chat or otherwise you can raise your hand and uh, we will we will call on you, do my best to see you, make sure my gallery is up. But um, any, any questions you all have and also Stephanie, if you see any on the Facebook live, feel free to But again, we're so grateful you all joined us. I know we covered a lot of ground, so <laughs> we will send a follow-up email with the slides as well as the recording and also um, contact information. Oh, great, Janine, thank you for sharing that. Wonderful, we're, we're grateful for your work and, uh, and for you doing that, thank you. Awesome. I know questions come up. So if if you think of something tomorrow morning or anytime, please just feel free to reach out to us. The main email is probably the best, which is um, managed by Stephanie. That's phwinfo at gmail.com. And from there, she can connect us, connect you with anybody uh, you may need. I'll put that. phwinfo at ncchurches.org. Yeah, and as we mentioned earlier, just want everybody to know that you're going to receive a follow-up email um, with all of this information and links to everything that we talked about. And yeah. questions are welcome anytime. I think we did get a question in the chat. Yes. So, Chastity, the answer is yes. If you are doing a community mini grant, every church has to do their own individual collaborative pledge for whichever church is applying to be included. And that also includes um, even churches who have the same pastor. So for instance, if it's a United Methodist charge, so one pastor over uh, pastoring two or more churches, even though it's the same pastor, each individual church has to have a collaborative pledge uh, submitted. The certificate sent out each year, we are a second year recipient of mini grant. <clears throat> Um, yes, we send out a certificate each year. So if you have not received your certificate, please email Stephanie at phwinfo at ncchurches.org and we will make sure you get that. And to clarify, you only get a certificate um, with your collaborative pledge. Cool. Thank you, yes. We can make you a certificate for your mini grant if you want. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. I was.
<clears throat> well, if we have no other questions, I do want to plug an upcoming event we have. Um, it is called Growing Communities of Inclusion, Mental Health and Harm Reduction. This is actually going to be an in-person event at St. Andrews by the Sea in Nags Head, North Carolina. And we'll be talking about how substance use and mental health are interconnected and different ways that faith communities can think about a mental health or an overdose response uh, project or different ideas of ways your community could get involved. Um, so we're very excited about this event. It's going to be on November 3rd, 8.30 to 11. And with that, we have a tradition at PHW events of doing a closing ritual of three deep breaths. And I'm going to lead us in that. Um, I'm going to count off the first deep breath and then feel free to take the second to at your own pace. So. Close your eyes. If you are comfortable, feel your body wherever you are sitting and breathe in and out. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Thank you all for the work you're doing in your communities. We so appreciate all the work you do and are so excited to be partners with you. Uh, yes, we can send out the Nags Head event info. Somebody put in the chat. Uh, yeah. yeah. We can definitely do that. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for being here.